With graphics cards still in a pretty short supply in 2022, the notion of creating or maybe even upgrading a traditional gaming PC seems further and further away than ever before. Both gamers and content creators alike have demonstrated that they'll basically go to almost any length to secure a new graphics engine for their PC, with bots buying up cards in a few seconds after they go on sale, and there's even folks camping out overnight at their local computer store. But there's something that you may have not considered considered before, and that is, do you even need a graphics card? In fact, could you even use your CPU as an integrated GPU instead? Well, let's find out. CPUs that have a built-in integrated graphics card are becoming an increasingly appealing alternative for a much wider audience of gamers. and. Interest in built-in integrated graphics will help to keep growing as long as actual graphics cards remain nearly unaffordable. However, we want to know if in today's short stack GPU climate, is it really possible to actually play with a graphics card as an integrated one with your main PC and play on high-end FPS games like God of War, Call of Duty, Battlefield, and so on. First of all, let's break down the different types of GPUs. A dedicated GPU and integrated GPU are two types of graphics processor units, which are often used to play various types of games. You may also have heard of the term discrete, with discrete and dedicated being interchangeable. An integrated GPU relies on the system's primary memory or RAM, and currently, integrated graphics chips are directly embedded within the CPU, dictating how much RAM is utilized for graphics processing in games. The advantage of integrated graphics is that they are less expensive, resulting in a far cheaper computer, and they generate less heat than dedicated GPUs, which allows for much smaller devices with less cooling. Furthermore, a laptop with integrated graphics will be more power efficient, allowing for a much longer battery life. On the other hand, dedicated or discrete units have their own visual memory that is devoted solely to graphic processing, and dedicated video RAM or VRAM is faster than more traditional RAM, but also frees up RAM for many other tasks. Powerful graphics cards are more expensive and necessitate more complex power supplies. Plus, they need much more integrated cooling systems to be able to keep the cheap system from burning up entirely. Still, they're the more ideal option if you do plan to use your computer for much more heavy gaming. So how good are integrated graphics anyways? There's still some hope if you don't want to break the bank. The built-in or integrated graphics on your CPU can still provide adequate, if not sometimes exceptional performance. Really though, it just depends upon the games that you're going to be playing, with the graphics settings you're going to be playing with, and the age of your processor overall. The main thing that you want to be concern about here is the gaming itself, because for most other PC tasks, integrated graphics will suffice. Professional duties as well will rely on the GPU of a computer, such as graphics rendering, video editing, and GPU accelerated computing, all located within NVIDIA's CUDACore and OpenCL, with being a few examples. You'll probably be more aware that your workflow does need a strong GPU. Integrated graphics alone should be enough for everyday computer tasks, like online browsing, media playback, video conferencing, document writing, and photo editing. Gaming, on the other hand, is an entirely different ship. Unless you're playing a very old or straightforward game, you'll never have a perfect or even close to perfect gaming experience with integrated graphics. The goal here is to achieve the highest frame rates feasible while also sacrificing graphics settings and resolution. To begin with, most of the integrated graphics cards will not be able to play at a default resolution of 1080p, so be willing to downgrade to 720p when necessary. Most games these days do choose the former as their default resolution, and going even higher to 1440p or 4K would definitely necessitate a graphics card because integrated graphics just can't provide that. The graphic settings are the next trade-off. Some games will surprise you by operating at high or even ultra settings, depending on how up-to-date your CPU is. These will most likely be much older games that aren't a challenge for modern graphics cards, although there are a few gems to be found. Most games will automatically select the best graphical settings that you got, and you may be fine with that. For example, you can try turning off unnecessary effects, lowering the resolution, or even lowering the graphics altogether by one or two notches. Those last two options are frequently swapped. For example, there are some games that play at 1080p with lower graphics that will be worthwhile, while other games might be better at 720p with medium graphics. This is mainly dependent though on how well the game runs on your machine and what you consider playable. Finally, frame rate performance is a trade-off 
consider as well. A game should be able to run at a solid 60 FPS, or at least close to it. And although modern built-in GPUs can occasionally surprise you, this is mainly unrealistic for integrated graphics. The bare minimum is 30 frames per second, which is about as good as it gets in most games with integrated graphics. Anything less than that 30 FPS quickly becomes unplayable due to the excessive stuttering and screen tearing. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, is there a specific game that's compatible with integrated graphics? Well, it's honestly difficult to predict what kind of performance you're gonna be shooting for. When it comes to minimal graphics settings for popular games, standalone graphics cards are always recommended, although integrated graphics are largely ignored. This means that you'll either have to figure out which graphics cards your built-in GPU is equivalent to, or maybe estimate performance for each game. Honestly, we favor the latter alternative since the data is more readily available on hand and in general, just more reliable. So for example, let's say you got a laptop with a Tiger Lake i7-1185G7 CPU with Intel XE graphics and you want to play Witcher 3 on it. Simply type Intel XE Graphics Witcher 3 into your search engine like Google and see what results pop up. From sites like User Benchmark, you'll be able to receive several videos with gaming examples and results. Also, watch some of the videos to check how well the game will play for you, and keep in mind that although the graphics are the same, the CPU might be stronger or worse than yours. You want to know from these videos what resolution the gamer was using, what graphics they've got turned on, and what type of frame rate is possible while playing that game. Graphics and resolution information may usually be found in the video or of the video description, along with frame rates that are typically presented during the video. You can end up making a more informed judgment about whether it's worth your time and money once you do know what kind of performance your setup is likely to attain with a specific game. Although onboard graphics have definitely come a long way, the finest performers have really emerged recently in the past couple of years. For example, a Ryzen 3000 APU or Ryzen 4000 processor on desktops will deliver the optimum results, while laptops will benefit from a Ryzen 4000 processor or more. Depending on the game, a CPU with UHD 620 graphics or later will suffice on these. Mac users have it a little bit easier, as such few games run natively on the platform and system requirements specify which Mac generation you need. However, most Intel-based Macs built in the previous three years will function with Mac games on Steam, although those using the new M1 ARM architecture from Mac, on the other hand, will have to learn through trial and error. This is due to the fact that so little software is currently available for these chips, so you'll basically have to rely on the Rosetta 2 compatibility layer to play games, which may or may not work depending on the title. It's not always easy to stick with integrated graphics instead of a graphics card, but it is achievable for those willing to make sacrifices. Look, you're not gonna be able to play all the latest and best games out there, and you're not going to get that same high-level performance even at a mid-range level of 1080p. Nonetheless, even if you don't wanna spend the extra money on a graphics card, you still got plenty of options out there. Now over to you guys. Do you have any experience using any sort of integrated graphics card CPUs for gaming? Was it a pleasant experience, or did it not go so well? Let us know about your experience in the comment section below, and thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel if you want more content just like this, and don't forget to ding that notification bell so that way you don't miss out on any more content updates from us. Until next time, folks, stay safe and stay informed.